Yijin River. Uh, we're located in Seoul, Korea. We're in the middle of development for the, the second version of the Turtleboard base. We're hoping to replace the iCreate with something that's a little bit more feature heavy than the iCreate and overcome a few of its flaws and make the whole Turtleboard experience great. So, some of the features that are probably different from what users are expecting from the Turtlebot. Um, we have an upgraded power management system. So by default, you have a lithium battery embedded in the base, which will give you about an hour's worth of power supply. If you want more, you can plug in an external battery on top, which will double your lifetime. Another feature of the power management system, uh, usually if you want to do it by hand, you can jack into the robot here via cable, uh, but we're also working on a docking station system at the moment which will continuously uh, provide a means of continuous operation. Uh, the biggest difficulty with that is to be able to provide bat power to recharge the battery and the laptop at the same time. So We have a connector on the front, this one here, which will be able to plug directly into your laptop. So when you dock to the docking station, the docking station will recharge both your battery and the laptop at the same time. Um, some other major features, uh, it includes a, a much better odometry uh, than the iRobot Create, so it should provide much better mapping performance. It also includes a factory calibrated gyro inside, which would remove the, the painstaking calibration process. Um, that sums up the major features that we'll be coming out with this robot. One of the main motivations to get us started on this was just to provide a ROS compatible base for uh, Korean universities and uh, just people who want to start learning about ROS in Korea. At the moment that's a, a really high barrier, mostly because of the language. It's difficult for them to get into the ROS wiki because it's thoroughly English. It's difficult for them to get into the community because of the English. So we're hoping if we can provide this and we can also provide some help with the, the Korean side of things, we can help propagate ROS a little bit more strongly in Korea. Um, we can have some impact there. And at the moment, the universities are, are building custom robots, which takes a lot of time. Uh, they're all incompatible, so they can't work together. If we have a good reference platform, um, that will be brilliant. So that's one area where we're trying to make some impact in Korea. Uh, we're hoping to get the cost to about the same cost as it would be to buy an aerobic crate with the power board uh, and with the gyro, which is about just a little under 300 American dollars. Um, timeline, we're hoping to go into production about September, um, so give or take a month or so, uh, so late this year. And for people who already have the original TurtleBot, will they be able to use your base? If they have the original TurtleBot, it should be a matter of just swapping out the iRobot Create and putting in the Kabuki. Hi, I'm Melanie, um, and this is Tully from Willow Garage, and we originally started the TurtleBot project last year in uh, April of 2011, and we're really excited about it, and uh, the new Kabuki Bot um, is going to really help us change the face of TurtleBot in terms of its capabilities for teaching robotics. Now, with the new sensor suite that it comes with, we can start doing more interesting applications with robotics. Uh, considering continuous op operations and also better navigation demos and things like that and mapping for education. We're also looking at using the ASUS Action um, on the Kabuki Bot to, or Turtle Bot, however you want to call it, uh, to do um, to reduce the amount of uh, power that you need to supply to the, the sensor itself. The ASUS Action is now a USB only connector and we no longer need to provide 12 volts, making it a little bit easier on the user. Uh, so one of the things that we struggle with right now um, with the iRobot Create in, in the TurtleBot is that it doesn't have as high fidelity encoders and that really limited, limits the amount of localization that you can do in a large room. And it also limits the type of multi-robot interaction things that you can do in some ways. And so by having the better sensors, the higher resolution encoders, 
students will have the capability to do more interesting robot applications with a low-cost platform. And if I'm a hobbyist with the original TurtleBot, should I upgrade to the... Yes, you should upgrade. I think it'll be a great improvement. You can map your house a lot better and you can do a lot of fun and interesting things and it's really easy to do. All you have to do is unmount the four standoffs on your current TurtleBot, on your iRobot Create, and plug your new KabukiBot right in. Excellent. <laughs> so my name is Matt Rendell with ClearPath Robotics. We make uh, mobile robots and unmanned vehicles for research and education purposes. Our primary focus is on the research end of the research and education spectrum. But what we've noticed over the past year, year and a half with the TurtleBot version 1.0 is there's been some strong pull into the education segment. Um, so we want to build on that and we want to get TurtleBot and Ross deeper into the education market and, and really get it into the hands of high school students uh, so that they can start experiencing robotics at a high level uh, very early on in their education so that by the time they mature through their degree it's second nature. Uh, this is a very um, a very important step in the evolution of robotics and if you look at the personal computer revolution it was a really important thing when the big mainframe computers made their way into high schools in the form of the earliest personal computers. Uh, so with the TurtleBot 2.0 what we really want to do is wrap strong curriculum at the high school level so that students with uh, first robotics experience and, and even no robotics experience can begin experiencing robotics um, at the level that Ross uh, makes available. So we're, we're really excited to launch TurtleBot 2.0 um, and it'll be out on the market soon. So what kind of feedback have you gotten about the original TurtleBot and how is the new version of the TurtleBot going to make this better, a better platform for education? Well, the, the biggest difference would be uh, the first TurtleBot was, was built on, on the iRobot Create, um, and so there were integration considerations that needed to be made in order to get the TurtleBot to, to the state where it was uh, able to be released. In order to do that, certain concessions needed to be made. With the new TurtleBot, we've got much tighter integration, so that the system, uh, from an electromechanical perspective, is, is a lot more robust, uh, which is a really important thing for earlier education. Uh, students tend to be very rough uh, on equipment. So we were talking to a customer of ours who had about 26 of these TurtleBots in a lab, and over the course of a year, his students were able to break eight of them. Um, so. You, you really want to make sure that the system is going to be able to withstand the rigors of um, student learning curves, basically. Uh, so the, the, new, the new platform here um, is a, a joint effort with Eugen Robotics out of Korea. Um, and so they've taken a lot of feedback from what was working and what wasn't working with the iRobot Create um, and some of the customizations that we had to make on top of it and they've actually integrated it all on the platform level. So it's a lot harder for students to get access to it, it's a lot harder for them to break it. Um, and so these are our platforms that we're hoping will be able to have greater longevity in the classroom. Uh, that's, that's really the biggest change. Uh, and the second big change is really the, the increased emphasis on curriculum um, and, and sort of the the tutorials and, and videos and resources that you package around the turtle box. That, that's really what's going to make a difference. What's the one feature that you're most excited about with the new platform? Um, the one feature that I'm most excited about, I, I, I personally like that it's black. <laughs>